Remember? Why, this is nice. You didn't expect to see me back, did you? So soon. Well, it's after office hours. That's right, Max. No one around. What's on your mind? Do I have to draw a map? What the... Don't move. Where, where did you get that? Stay right where you are, Max. You, you wouldn't... You, you wouldn't shoot. Listen, I, I'm sorry over the way things turned out. It's been tough for And you. now it's going to be tough for you. Paula, you wouldn't... Don't stop! <laughs> The BBC presents A Case for Dr. Morell, another adventure by Ernest Dudley, with Thistle Parker as the famous Dr. Morell and Sheila Sim as his secretary, Miss Frey. Confession of Guilt. I thought it was a lovely evening, Dr. Morell. I have enjoyed it. So glad, Miss Frey. And your speech was absolutely fascinating. What a shame Inspector Hood was called away in the middle of it. I noticed a waiter speak to him, and he left the table. Mm, he didn't come back either. Some urgent matter has arisen, no doubt. Oh, he'd have been thrilled to hear all you said. Everyone else was. Except the old diehards who didn't know what I was talking about. Oh, yes, Dr. Morrell. Oh, look, a police car. I had already noticed it. Outside this office. Well, I wonder... Well, I know the driver. He drives Inspector Hood. Good evening, Miss Fry. Good evening, Dr. Morrell. Hello. Good evening. Is something going on? Nothing very special. Suicide. Oh, dear. You come from the big do that Inspector Hood was at? Hmm, the legal and medical dinner. He got called away to do this little job. I see. Uh, oh, oh here comes Inspector Hood now. Hello, Miss Frail. Mm. Sorry to have to leave in the middle of your speech, Dr. Morell. I'm gratified to learn it was business and not boredom that was responsible. <laughs> they knew at the yard I was near here. Makes you think. How many cases can you recall, Dr. Morell? where the suicide shoots himself through the heart. It's always the head in my experience. I'm inclined to agree with you. This chap had sat at his desk, typed out a note to his wife, and then pulled a bullet through his heart. I do recall a case on the continent where a man shot himself in that manner. Yes, that may explain it. He lived abroad, I believe. Yes, thanks for the tip. At all. I'll read your speech in full in the papers tomorrow. Oh, Sarge. Good morning, Inspector. I just come from Mrs. Powell's flat. Did you get much? Uh, she's still overcome with shock and the rest of it. Yes, it's natural. She can offer no reason why her husband had committed suicide. No business worries? No. She made it obvious he was loaded. Uh, you should see her flat. Nothing else? Her doctor was there. He was Max Powell's doctor, too, so I asked him if he had any ideas. All he knew was that he had a bit of a weak heart. Nothing else he could think of. Uh, they sometimes do it for no good reason. This must be one of them, I... I suppose. What is it, Inspector? Oh, nothing, really. It's only that shooting himself through the heart. Still, he could have picked up the idea of living in France or something. Could be. That was what Dr. Morell seemed to think last night. This is Dr. Morell's house. Good morning. You don't know me, but that is... I'm afraid the doctor's very busy. I'm sure, but, but if only you'd see Well, uh, if you'll hold on, I'll speak to him. Uh, what name shall I give? Paula Webb. Miss Paula Webb. Ah, well, just a moment, Miss Webb. I'll ask Dr. Morell. I'm desperate. It's a matter it's of... Life and death. If you'll hold on, please. Um, someone wants an appointment, Doctor. A uh, Miss Paula Webb. The name is unfamiliar. You don't know her, but she sounds in a bit of a state. 
you've got half an hour free this afternoon. Oh, very well. I'll tell her. Uh, Miss Webb, Dr. Morell can see you this afternoon at... Hello? Are you there? Miss Webb. Oh, well, I'm blessed. She's gone. Miss Webb. Oh, she's hung up. What an extraordinary way to behave. Don't you think so, Doctor? What is extraordinary, Miss Frail, is that you should be surprised. If you could manage to concentrate your attention on these notes, mine, I should be obliged. <laughs> Didn't I have the courage? Why did I ring off like that? Perhaps it never happened. It was only some dreadful nightmare. The police couldn't have made a mistake like that. That's what it says in the papers. Max Powers was found dead in his Park Lane office last night. An automatic pistol was found by his side. Mr. Powers had left a letter addressed to his wife. Max Powers built up the Mayfair Fashion House, with which his name was associated until his rival the most... Oh, there it is. If only I could believe it, but I can't. I must tell someone or I shall go crazy. I, I can't phone Dr. Morell again. I can't. But, but I've got to see him. I've got to get this off my mind. Oh, good afternoon. I'm... I'm Paula Webb. Paula Webb? Oh, why, it was you who phoned this morning. Yes. Can I see him? Dr. Morell, now. Please make him. I make him? You don't know Dr. Morell. If I'd phoned, I should have rung off again. Well, perhaps you'd better come in. Thank you. Uh, Miss Webb? Yes? You will stay there. I, I mean, after that phone business, I, I don't want to tell Dr. Morell you're here and then... Perhaps... I won't run away. Uh, I promise. Oh, well, that's all right, then. Oh, dear, I know he'll bite my head. Since a clear understanding of the results of the lie detector technique depends upon a recognition of the various blood pressure and respiration changes recorded by the instrument. Um, Dr. Morell, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. But what uh, is it? It's Miss Webb. While the lie detector records certain bodily changes which may or may not be... Uh, Whom did you see, Miss Webb? Miss Paula Webb. Has she an appointment? Well, not exactly. Well, either she has or she hasn't. Well, she phoned about it this morning, but she didn't wait and she rang off again. Very well. I will allow myself to be persuaded by you. You'll see her? Oh, thank you. I'll go and tell her. She'll be so good. Just relax, Mr. Relax. Yes, Doctor. And tell me quite quietly from the beginning. I went to work for Max Powers two years ago, I... I didn't realize that he had a wife. And when I did find out, he told me he would soon be free and he could marry me. Then, about a week ago, I discovered there was someone else. I can't tell you what it did to me. On the contrary, Miss Webb, you are telling me. Proceed. Last night... Last night, I made up my mind. He often worked late at Park Lane, and I had a key to the back way, and I went there at the time I knew he'd be alone. His office was big and luxurious, where he entertained buyers and business people. It was next to his secretary's office. There was a light showing under his door. Who is it? Who is it? Why, Paula. Yes, Max. Paula. Remember? Why, this is nice. You didn't expect to see me back, did you? So soon. Well, it's after office hours. That's right, Max. No one around. What's on your mind? Do I have to draw a map? What the... Don't move. Where did you get that? Stay right where you are, Max. You, you wouldn't... You wouldn't shoot. Listen, I'm sorry over the way things turned out. It's been tough for you. And now it's going to be tough for you. Paula, you wouldn't... No! Don't no. no. he started to move towards me, he fell forward on his knees and was staring at me as if he couldn't believe what had happened. Suddenly, I, I panicked. All, all I wanted to do was get away from, from that. I, I don't remember getting home. And when the morning came, I meant to give myself up to the police. But you've changed your mind, Miss Webb? When, when I read this morning's papers, it said he'd been found shot and that he'd written a letter to his wife. It, it was there in the newspaper. I happen to have read the account. And don't you see? I shot him, yes. 
that he was going to kill himself anyway. You mean that you merely performed a task he was about to perform for himself? Well, it does make it different, doesn't it? I killed him, but he deserved to die. He planned to die. Surely if I can escape the penalty for what I've done, I'm entitled to. Well, as for that, I can't advise you. I'm a psychiatrist, not a lawyer. Nor am I a judge. Please help me. What can I do? Or is it none of these things that you require? What do you mean? Have you come to me because you think I will set your conscience at rest? Because you want me to tell you that it's practically all right for you to keep silent? You have confessed that you've taken another human being's life. You admit that you've killed a man whom you once loved and you believe loved you. Dr. Morell, please. You willfully murdered him. And now, because of some fortuitous chance which has completely transformed the situation, you ask me to soothe your troubled mind, smooth away your fears, so that you can go on living as if nothing has ever happened. Supposing I said that you must go to the police... And tell them what you've told me. What then, Miss Webb? I don't know. You don't understand. He drove me to it. After you shot him and he fell to the floor, did you touch the body? No, I couldn't have touched him. As a matter of interest, Miss Webb, how did the gun come into your possession? I... I borrowed it. From whom? From a man. He's in the fashion business. I met him through Max. What's his name and address? I... His name's Dacre. Ellis Dacre. His address is 16 Sloan Place off Sloan Street. I see. But why are you asking me all this if you're not going to help me? It occurs to me that this matter requires proving a little more deeply. You mean, Dr. Morell, I, I don't have to go to the police? I mean, Miss Webb, that this seems to be a case for me after all. I said when this inquest opened, members of the jury, you are here to inquire into the circumstances surrounding the death of Mr. Max Powers. All the relevant witnesses have been called. You have heard all the evidence. And now it is your duty to give your verdict as representatives of the public. You have listened carefully, I am sure. And it is quite plain how this unfortunate man met his death. Was he so tormented by some secret fear or anxiety which rendered him emotionally unstable at the time that he decided to take his own life? That is what you have to decide. Now, will you please retire and consider your verdict? What do you think of it, Dr. Morell? I imagine they won't be long reaching their verdict. A pretty clear cut, really. I thought you presented the facts as you saw them, plainly enough. Thanks, Doctor. Poor Mrs. Powers has stood up to the ordeal well. You mentioned that she'd been his secretary before she married Powers. Yes, that was about seven years ago, I believe. I wonder if I might glance at the letter he wrote to her. Yes. Here it is. Thank you. He left it there in the machine after he touched it. Yes. I can't go on any longer. Life has become too much for me. I just can't take it anymore. There's nothing left but this way out. Goodbye, darling. Max. Some secret worry or something got him down. So it would appear. Odd spelling, that. Did you notice? Where? Oh, that word. He must have forgotten to add the E. Yes, you were right, Dr. Morell. The jury haven't taken long. Mrs. Powers has gone very pale. Uh... Members of the jury, have you considered your verdict? Yes, sir. We find that Max Powers killed himself while the balance of his mind was disturbed. <gasps> Mrs. Powers, are you all right? Uh, 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 let me help you. She's fainted, Dr. Morell. Yes. Uh, it's been pretty grim for her, poor thing. Open that window, will you? Get some air to her. Hello? This is Dr. Morell's house? No, he's not. Yes, he's gone to the inquest. All right. Dr. Morell, you're back. Observant of you. Those newspaper reporters have never stopped phoning. Was the verdict suicide? Well, that foregone conclusion. The coroner not being in possession of certain facts known to us. I've had an idea. Uh, some coffee, Miss Frail, don't you think? I'll get some, but, but first I must tell you. Miss Frail, no doubt your theory is most absorbing, but... Oh, well, of course, if you'd rather not know the answer, I don't want to force it on you. I, I mean, just plod on in your own way. Thank you. 
I want to make a few notes. And then perhaps I could have some coffee. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm ready to take notes. At the inquest this morning, Inspector Hood reaffirmed what he'd mentioned to us in Park Lane the night before last, making crystal clear what I'd already surmised, which was that Max Powers was found not in his own office, but in his secretary's adjoining. Obviously. And on the face of it, that he had taken his own life. Yes, but... I am gratified that you agree with me. But against this apparently indisputable evidence, we have Miss Webb's revelation. But it's so perfectly simple. She made the whole thing up. She's madly infatuated with him. She got this guilt complex because of the wife. Well, this is fascinating. You appear to have overlooked the fact that Miss Webb's action was premeditated. She borrowed a gun for the purpose. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Every word of her account rings true. That is where its significance lies. She described how she shot Powers in his office. He fell to the floor. And yet he was discovered at the desk in his secretary's office next door. Dr. Morell, who moved the body. And why? I just thought of something. She did fire at him, as she said. But she missed. I had considered that possibility and rejected it. Oh, oh dear. There would have been visible damage caused by the bullet. The police found only one bullet in the deceased. Oh, I just don't understand it. Which reminds me, since I'm not going to get that coffee... Oh, Doctor. It's too late now. There's something more pressing. Yes, I think perhaps you'd better accompany me. Where are we going? To 16 Sloan Place. That's where Ellis Baker lives. The man who lent her the gun. Precisely, my dear Miss Frail. How dumb of me not to recognize you at once, Dr. Morell. I've heard and read a lot about you. This is Miss Frail, my secretary. How do you do? Delighted to meet you, Miss Frail. What a charming photograph you have there. Why, it's her. Paula Webb. You know her? We have met. I see. Is it on account of her that you're here? You're quite the mind reader, Mr. Baker. What is this about Paula? I understand you lent her a revolver. So that's it. You're not telling me she's made a fool of herself with it. Didn't you think it was risky to lend Miss Webb a loaded revolver? Do you think so? She asked me, so I lent her one. A Smith & Wesson Centennial. It fires a .38 caliber cartridge. If that's what you've come to ask, there it is. And, um, see these cartridges? These are what you gave her to use? That's right. I see. Most illuminating. I let her have three rounds. She admitted she didn't know a great deal about handling a revolver, but I imagined it would uh, give her confidence. Most thoughtful of you. You were acquainted with Max Powers, were you not? Paula has been talking to you. Yes, I knew him and his wife. Why? As you say, Miss Webb has been talking. Is she trying to say it wasn't suicide that someone bumped him off? What makes you think that idea might have occurred to her? Listen, Dr. Morell, you didn't call here just to chat about Paula Webb or my collection of pistols. Max Powers was a first-rate heel... And if someone's murdered him and got away with it, good luck to them. I wish I could have done it. Anything else I can tell you before you go? You've been most informative. Only too glad. Goodbye, Miss Frail. No, goodbye, Mr. Dacre. Goodbye, Dr. Morell. Or should we say au revoir? That rather depends upon events. <laughs> so we'll just make it so long, eh? You didn't breathe a word to him, Dr. Morell. How she could think she'd shot him when all the time she hadn't. It was that somewhat mystifying feature which prompted the visit to Dicker. Who told you nothing, except that he had lent her the gun, and that he took a dim view of Max Powers. It was not so much what he said, but what I saw. Well, I didn't see anything. It was a beautiful flat. Well, there was her photo and all those guns. He confirmed it was the firearm which she described. Which you never told him she'd lost. Anyway, he's got plenty more. What interested me were the cartridges which he'd given her. Well, I didn't bother to look at those. Had you done so, even you might have noticed one stimulating fact about them. All right, Dr. Morell, what was it? They were blanks, Miss Rail. Oh, Miss Webb. You've got to see me. Oh, M Miss Webb, come back. Oh, Dr. Morell will be annoyed. Here in the early evening paper, the stop press. Look, 4 p.m. news, new turn in Park Lane death. 
Understood. Scotland Yard, not satisfied with the results of earlier inquiries into death of Max Powers of Mayfair Fashion House, found shot in his office three nights ago. As a result of information received, renewed investigations being made into circumstances of the tragedy. Police have found out that he was murdered after all. Oh, I'm glad you called, Webb. There are one or two matters I think you might care to know about. What have you done? Well, if your anxiety is on account of that newspaper report, you may relax. But the only person who could have made them change their mind is you. I came to see you for help and all you've done now, is... Let me assure you that your own situation is in no way jeopardized. Oh, Dr. Morell, I'm so sorry. Uh, Miss but... Frail, what was it I was to explain to Miss Webb? Oh, you mean about... Uh, about... Uh... You couldn't be more explicit. What Miss Frail means is that it was impossible for you to have killed Max Powers. But I shot him. No, no, Dr. Morell's right. Mr. Dacre only gave you blank cartridges. Blank cartridges? Mm. He thought you might get into trouble, so when you fired them, they were only blank. But he... I saw him fall. He merely fainted from shock. When he recovered consciousness, someone else took a hand. Someone else killed him? That is the most logical explanation. Uh, now, Miss Frail, uh, take Miss Webb into the other room... I have some phone calls to make. Yes, Dr. Morell. I can't believe... Come, be come along. I I'll make you a cup of tea. Oh, Miss Frail. Yes, Doctor? You may care to accompany me on a visit I shall be paying tonight. Oh, yes. Uh, come along, Miss Webb. You've been under a great stress, but it's all over. Now, first, Inspector Hood, and then... Taxi. Where to? Uh, Archway House, Park Lane, please. Thank you, Miss Frail. I don't think anything will go wrong. I fail to see why. The trap has been carefully baited. And they'll walk right into it? It's a matter of process of elimination. The motive fits and the opportunity. Above all else, who would have thought of typing that farewell letter? Anyway, we shall know for certain in a little while. Um, uh, this corner, please, driver. Thank you, sir. Steps to the back way in. You got the key? It's very dark. Would you prefer it if I left you here? Oh, no, no, no. I'll come with you. I'm flattered by your trust in me. The office will be this way. Oh, it's awfully eerie. Um, this is the door. I suppose we can't switch on the light. You suppose right. What do we do now? Wait. Oh, I didn't know it was going to be quite like this. Shh. Quiet. What is it? Yes. What the devil? <gasps> oh. oh, it's you, Inspector Hood. Hello, so you got here before me. You know exactly how events will proceed. Yes, thanks to you. Better put out that light again. Right. You never mentioned him, Dr. Moran. He is part of the trap. Listen, it must be them this time. Is anyone there? It's her. All right, Hood. Good evening, Mrs. Powers. What is this? I do... Why, you're Dr. Morell. I regret having to disappoint you. So it was you who phoned me. You who pretended you thought you could blackmail me. I had to get you here by hook or by crook. You've got nothing to be afraid of. So what have you got me here Just for? Just to type a little letter. What are you talking about? You can type, can't you? Even with your gloves on, in order not to leave any fingerprints. I don't know what you're getting at. I'll tell you what to put. Just a very brief letter. Miss Frail, put some paper in the machine. Yes, Doctor. It's up to you, Mrs. Powers. If you're innocent, you've got nothing to fear. Of course I'm innocent. Max killed himself. Then take a letter. Very well. 
I can't go on any longer. Stop. Life has become too much for me. I guess I just can't take it anymore. Stop. There's nothing left but this way out. Stop. Goodbye, darling. Max. This is what he wrote. Is it? Isn't it what you wrote? <laughs> Good. There it is again. Goodbye, darling. And you typed it the same way. G W O D B Y without the E. What, what do you mean? I've always Exactly, Mrs. Powell. You've always felt <gasps> goodbye without the final E. I like walking along Park Lane at night, don't you, Doctor? The fresh air is certainly welcome. Mm. After all that went on in that office, you mean. And you don't think Dacre knew? I believe he suspected, but he obviously felt that our husband deserved what he got. Anyway, it's for Inspector Hood to sort out. You've done your part. Thank you, Miss Frail. All because she discovered about Paula Webb. I must say, I, I still don't know how you were so sure it was Mrs. Powell. I wasn't. Although a number of facts began to emerge which pointed to her. The jealous wife, obviously... Her reaction to the verdict at the inquest? Did she faint at the knowledge that she was unsuspected? Uh, then I telephoned her, masquerading as someone who had discovered the truth and that she would have to buy my silence. When she agreed to talk it over with me, I was sure. Fancy her meeting you at the very place where she shot her husband. Don't you understand, my dear Miss Frail? Well, of course I do, Dr. Morell. How do you mean? She had to return to the scene of her crime. Like any other criminal, she found herself subconsciously impelled to give herself away. Oh, I see. She had to confess. Just as with any criminal, an inner compulsion forced Mrs. Powers to bring upon herself her own doom. That was a full adventure in a BBC series featuring Ernest Dudley's famous character, Dr. Morell. And, of course, his secretary, Miss Frey. The artists taking part were Dr. Morell, Cecil Parker, Miss Frail, Sheila Sim, Inspector Hood, Philip Ray, Paula Webb, Mary Law. Other parts were played by Morris Sweden, Norman Wynne, Hugh Manning, Betty Linton, and Alan McClellan. This recorded program was produced by Leslie Bridgemont.